This video is about chapter 26, and in this chapter, we will begin to look at some chi-squared tests. And we'll talk about three specifically, the chi-squared goodness of fit test, the chi-squared test for homogeneity, and the chi-squared test for independence. First, the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Okay, all the chi-squared tests have to do with categorical data. Okay, so this is really coming full circle with our um, study of statistics because we're now coming back and doing inference with categorical data. Okay, the goodness of fit test is asking how well does this data fit some known or theoretical distribution? Okay, so for example, when I roll a six-sided dice, is the distribution uniform? Okay, you're testing um, some data against a known or theoretical distribution. Okay, when I open a package of M&Ms, is the color distribution the same as stated on the website? Or is the ethnic distribution for unemployed individuals the same as the population's ethnic distribution um, on the last census? So we're taking some data and comparing it with some known or theoretical distribution. Okay, now for chi-squared tests, the hypotheses will not be written in equations like um, the past hypothesis tests. Um, they'll be written with words. Okay, so the hypothesis uh, for a goodness of fit test will say something along the lines of the distribution of this variable is the same as whatever the theoretical or known distribution is. Okay, and the alternative is that the distribution of the um, variable is not the same as the known or theoretical distribution. It's done in words, not with equations. Next, let's talk about some assumptions and conditions for chi-square tests. So these are the assumptions and conditions for the goodness of fit test, but also the other chi-square tests as well. Okay, um, there's four of them, but there are two that are really important. Okay, you should have counted data, so data there in counts, and the counts should be independent of each other. That's true for all tests. Okay, the two that you must explicitly test and write down how you're testing them is the randomization condition. Okay, the individuals who have been counted should be a random sample from the population of interest and the expected cell frequency condition. We should expect to see at least five individuals or each five um, subjects in each cell. Okay, you must check both of those. Okay, so um, when we calculate the p-value, um, we will look at the differences between the observed uh, values and what we expected for each category. Okay, now because some differences are positive and some are negative, we will then square those differences. This is very much like what we did for um, lines of best fit. And we want the relative sizes of the differences. So we then divide by the expected count for that cell. And we add that up for each of the cells and we get something called the chi-squared um, test statistic. And it, it's written like a capital X, but it's called chi, not chi. Um, I've heard that pronounced sometimes, but it's chi-squared. Okay, now that we have our test statistic, um, we need to discuss the chi-squared distribution before we can find the p-value. Okay, so the chi-squared distribution is a family of distributions based on the degrees of freedom. Okay, um, that's similar to the T distribution where it's based on the number of degrees of freedom. Okay, um, the chi-square distribution is always um, skewed right. Okay, it's always skewed right, um, although with more degrees of freedom, it begins to look a little more symmetric, uh, but it's always skewed right. Okay, um, and when you do a chi-square test, it's always going to be a one-tailed test where you look at the upper end of the tail, the, the right-tailed test. Okay, um, th some things about the distribution is it always peaks at uh, the degrees of freedom minus two. So this one, it peaks at about three. This peaks at about eight. This peaks at about 12, sorry, 13. Okay, the other thing you need to know is that the mean of the, the chi-squared distribution is the same as um, the degrees of freedom. So um, with the degrees of freedom of five, um, the mean is actually right here, so this area is the same as this area. Okay, I'll stop drawing on that so it doesn't get too overcrowded with, with writing. 
okay? But the mean of the chi-squared distribution is the same as the degrees of freedom, okay? Now, what that means in your hypothesis test um, is that the, um, the sum of the chi-squareds will be about the same as the number of cells for your chi-squared test. Okay, so that's kind of a, a rule of thumb for your test statistic. If it's roughly the same as the number of cells you're adding up, um, that would be average um, for that test. Okay, so in actually calculating the p-value, um, the chi-squared goodness of fit test has degrees of freedom that are equal to n minus 1, where n is the number of categories, okay, the number of categories, not the number of participants. That's different from, um, like, t-tests, um, where we looked at, you know, the number of uh, the sample size minus 1. Here it's the number of categories minus 1, okay? When we actually calculate the p-value for the chi-squared goodness of fit test, um, we usually just go and find the goodness of fit um, test in our calculator and calculate the p-value that way. Okay, we will put our observed um, counts in list one and then the expected counts in list two. Okay, and then we do the chi-squared goodness of fit test. We, it will calculate the observed minus expected divided by expect, sorry, observed minus expected squared divided by expected and add that up for each, um, each um, value in the list. Okay, um, and it will then calculate the um, p-value as we can see right here. Okay, um, if you're just given the chi-squared test statistic, there is a chi-squared CDF function um, over where you find the norm CDF and the T CDF. There is a chi-squared CDF. Um, we don't use it very much, but it, it is there. Okay, and it's always a right-tailed test. Um, so it is the chi-squared test statistic, comma, infinity, comma, degrees of freedom. So here's a really quick example. Uh, for chi the chi-squared goodness of fit test. We have counts of 256 executives in 12 zodiac sign categories. The natural um, null hypothesis is that birth dates of executives are divided equally among all zodiac signs. It doesn't matter what zodiac sign it is, um, it should be pretty uniform across zodiac signs. The test statistic looks at how closely the observed data matches this idolized um, situ um, situation. Okay, so the question is, are zodiac signs of CEOs distributed uniformly? Okay, this is a goodness of fit test because we're taking our data and comparing it against a theoretical distribution of a uniform distribution. Okay, the null hypothesis, again, in words is written, bursts are uniformly distributed over zodiac signs. Okay, and the alternative is that births are not uniformly distributed over zodiac signs. Okay, um, the two conditions that are really important are the randomization condition. Um, this is a convenient sample of executives, um, but that's no reason to suspect bias. Okay, so it wasn't really random. Um, and the expected cell frequency condition, um, 1 12th times 256 um, is 21.33, and all of those are bigger than 5. Okay, so we're okay on the expected cell frequency condition. Okay, um, normally at this point we'd go to our list and type in for list one our, our actual counts, and list two would be 12 point, sorry, 21.33 for each of the 12, and then we do our chi-squared GOF test as it's written in the calculator, and we find a p-value of 0.926. Okay, now that's a high p-value, and so just like always, if p is high, let it fly. And you would say with a p-value of 0.926, um, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There is not enough evidence to conclude that births um, are not uniformly distributed over zodiac signs. Next, the chi-square test of homogeneity. The chi-squared test of homogeneity is used when you have multiple populations and you want to see if they have the same distribution. Okay, so for example, is the color distribution the same between regular M&Ms and peanut M&Ms? Okay, you have two populations and you want, you're collecting data on both of them and you want to see if they have the same distribution or not. Okay, is 
is gender distribution the same at the corporate level of a of a company the area office level and the local level of a company okay you're collecting data on each of those and seeing if it's you know how likely is it that the um, distributions of gender are the same at each at each level okay our students choices of post graduation activities employment grad school other the same across all college departments agriculture arts education and so on Okay. Again, just like the goodness of fit test, our hypothesis will be with words. Okay. And it'll sound something like this. The distribution of blank is the same as blank. Okay. The distribution of blank is not the same as blank. Okay. We'll be um, looking, talking about the same or different distributions for your null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so when we calculate the p-value, um, we have to check the randomness condition, okay, but we will not check the expected cell frequency condition at this point, okay. Um, we'll come back and do that a little bit later, uh, and you'll see why in a second, okay. Um, we will again use the chi-square distribution, okay, that has the same properties as before. Um, the degrees of freedom, however, will be the rows minus one, times the columns minus one, okay? So for this data right here, we don't include the marginal distributions, okay? So um, I have one, two, three rows, and so it'll be three minus one times, and I have one, two, three, four columns, four minus one, and so I have two times three or six degrees of freedom. Now, in order to use the calculator to find the p-value, you'll have to put the data into a matrix, okay? Usually we use matrix A, okay? So you put the data, not the margins, just the data um, into matrix A and go find under, under stat, you have tests. C is chi-squared test. That's the one that you'll use, the chi-squared test. Now, as it does the chi-squared test, um, your observed counts are in matrix A. Okay. It will create a matrix B, or at least right into matrix B, the expected cell counts. Okay. So after you do the test and you see your p-value sitting there in your calculator, you actually go back into your matrix and you go to look at matrix B and double check that all the cells have expected counts more than five. Okay. And that's when you check it actually after the test, which it seems kind of weird, um, but that's the best way to do it. Okay, now, if you're asked a standalone question, asked about the expected count um, for one cell, um, the fast way is probably to do it by hand in those cases, okay? If you need to find it by hand, you then multiply the marginal distribution numbers together and then divide by the total, okay? So, for example, if I want to know it for this cell, whoops, this cell, I would take 722, 722 times 482, and then divide by the total 2,096, okay? So you multiply the two margins um, together and then divide by the total. That would give you the expected counts for that cell, okay? Then the chi-squared test on your calculator will give you your chi-squared test statistic and the p-value, okay? Again, this p-value is very, very small because it's written in scientific notation. Okay. And then just like always, if P is high, let it fly. If P is low, then you reject the null hypothesis. Okay, here is an example of a chi-squared test of homogeneity. Okay, um, we have reports from four colleges on the post-graduation activities of their 2006 graduating classes. Um, are students' choices of post-graduation activities the same across all the colleges? Okay, so your null hypothesis is written in words. Students' post-graduation activities are distributed in the same way for all four colleges. And your alternative hypothesis is that students' plans do not have the same distribution. Okay, at this point, you check the randomization condition. Okay, um, so, and then we plug this data right here into matrix A. And we go to stat tests, we do a um, chi-squared test, 
Okay, it will create the expected counts. We go check matrix B and make sure that all of those expected counts are more than five. Okay, it also will give us the p-value, um, which in this case is less than 0 0.001. Then my conclusion is the p-value is very small, so I reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's evidence that the post-graduation activities of students from these four colleges doesn't have the same distribution. Okay, that's an example of a chi-squared um, test of homogeneity. The last chi-squared test to talk about is the chi-squared test for independence. The chi-squared test for independence is used when you have one population and you want to see if two categorical variables that describe that population are independent of each other. For example, is getting hepatitis C independent of where you got a tattoo or if you got a tattoo. So a tattoo parlor, a tattoo elsewhere, or no tattoo. Okay, Is police car searches independent of race, black, white, or other? Was survival on the Titanic independent of gender? So you have this one big population and you're asking to see if two categorical variables are independent of each other. Now, just like the other two chi-squared tests, this hypothesis is also written with words, and the words are usually along the lines of, is this and that variable independent? And the alternative would, would be, this and that variable are not independent. Okay, things about calculating the p-value. The mechanics are the exact same as a chi-square test for homogeneity. In fact, they are even the same test in your calculator. Okay, so you still go to stat tests and do a chi-squared test with the exact same data. Okay, the degrees of freedom is still equal to rows minus one times columns minus one. Okay, you also still perform the test and then check the expected cell frequency condition. Okay, the difference between a chi-squared test for independence and the chi-squared test for homogeneity is the kind of data that you have, is it about one big population or is it about separate groups? And the question that you're asking, are you asking, are these variables independent of each other or are you asking, do these groups have the same distribution? Okay, so it's the same mechanics to find the p-value, but the nature of the data and the questions you're asking are different. Here is a quick example about the chi-square test for independence. We have counts of 626 individuals categorized according to their tattoo status and their hepatitis status. So this is one big population, okay? And we're looking at being categorized according to two separate variables. And the question is, are tattoo status and hepatitis status independent? Okay, the null hypothesis is tattoo status and hepatitis hepatitis status are independent. The alternative hypothesis is tattoo status and hepatitis status are not independent. Okay, now um, for the randomization condition, these data are from a retrospective study of patients being treated for something unrelated to hepatitis. So although it's not an SRS, they were selected to avoid bias. So I guess we can still proceed forward, um, you know, assuming that it's random enough uh, to not influence our study, okay? The next thing we do is we put this data right here into matrix A. And go in our calculator and do stat, tests, chi-squared test, okay? And that will create in matrix B the expected counts, okay? We go back, then go back and look at matrix B and see if there's any that are less than five. And apparently there were, was one or two um, that was less than five. Okay, so we have to go back and check that, make sure that doesn't influence our chi-square test statistic too much. Okay, but the p-value that we got um, was less than 0 0.0001. So our conclusion in context is the p-value is very small, so I reject the null hypothesis and conclude that hepatitis status is not independent of tattoo status. Because the expected cell frequency condition was violated, I need to check that the two cells with small expected counts did not influence this result too greatly. 
Okay, so that's an example of the chi-square test for independence. So this video was about three chi-squared tests. The chi-squared goodness of fit test, the chi-squared test for homogeneity, and the chi-squared test for independence. Thank you for watching.